Y'all in the winning circle, saw some squares though You in the killing fields, ignoring the scarecrows Yeah ho, I'm Benny Blanco in the last scene Making the power play high off of caffeine This is a tag team, fair to see the bad dream The male version of Kerry killing the class queen Bati bloggers quit dodging my emails Take yeah. that whack shit off, the real yeah. revamp <laughs> Welcome to the Let's Podcast, home of the New South Movement and the New South Movement Network. This is your boy Tight, one half of the Free Lunch Podcast duo. BG, how you feeling? Yes, indeed. The BG, the 27 Kids Free Lunch Podcast, we're back in. I'm doing good, man. Just trying to endure this summertime heat, though. Well, it's been a minute since we last spoke. Um, been traveling a little bit, looking forward to to uh to getting back to DC. A lot's been happening in the news lately, man. And I really and I really uh wanted to use today's topic and today's conversation to capture some of the current events and the current climate and what's happening in America. It's been on fire uh in the country. We have all types of things going on. So we do have a lot to talk about and we've got a good person to have this discussion with, man. Like we always do on the Free Lunch Podcast. It's actually um someone that I actually stumbled across um, his interviews. Uh, he's been doing a number of interviews, and to be honest with you, um, I think he's a forward thinker. He's a he's an innovator. He's, in my opinion, he's way, way ahead of his time um, in regards to the, the conversation that he brings uh, to, 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 the, to his audience. Um, and, and I actually stumbled across his, his uh, one of his interviews in which I became a huge supporter um, when he interviewed Little Boosie. Um, I thought that was a very, uh, very informative. And I, and I can remember it like it was yesterday, BG, because I, I, I listened to the uh, Little Boosie interview, and, and from that moment, that entire Saturday, it was a Saturday, I started going back and I started looking at all of his interviews, trying to understand, like, who is this guy? How did I miss 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 this individual? Why was I um, why was I a late bloomer or a late comer to the party? So on that Saturday, um, I started listening to um, like three or four other interviews, and I kind of want to touch on that today with him, a few of those. Uh, but but that's someone that I from the moment that I started supporting him um i wanted to have him on this on this particular show and i likened it to you know i like to use sports references so you know as a young journalist for us kind of stepping in this game and figuring out our way i I would make it kind of similar to like a young kid that's watching uh kd or steph curry in the league um guys that are definitely at their prime and and dominating the sport and for me I guess today is just that, you know, it's, it's it's like our voice is representative of the culture, but it's legitimate journalism, it's real news, and it's real informative. And with those interviews like you talked about, man, it, it really brings kind of this human aspect to people that we see as like superstars and this phenom is really getting to see them be real people and getting into real discussions and getting into their mind and how they think. And, you know, when we come and do these interviews, we try to do the same thing. So I guess what we'll be doing on, on, on this particular episode is what he usually does to people that he has on his platform. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm excited. Yeah, there's three interviews that I'm actually ask, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in asking him about. Uh, I'm sure he can name two of them uh, because they're kind of two of his most popular, and I mentioned one already. Uh, but he's an author. He's a, a founder and CEO uh, of Nightcap Live. Uh, standing tall is, is what his Twitter handle says. He's standing tall because that's what he's always done. Uh, a proud, um, proud of his of his heritage, uh, the Virgin Islands, um, as as the go to destination for all things inspiration and pop culture. Uh, I am Peter Bailey um, is an American new home for insight into what truly matters in our society uh, by offering soulful and introspective uh, reporters that redefines who we are as humanizing today's stories 
and newsmakers. When I when I listen to his his, his interviews, it's really um, something that that I lean on is the authentic the authenticity and the truth uh, behind his interviews, and that's a, and that's something that he stands on. Uh, so, no further ado, uh, we would like to welcome to the Freelance Podcast. Miami's very young, U.S. Virgin Islands um, son, um, Peter Bailey. Mr. Bailey, how are you today? Man, thank you guys, man. I really appreciate you guys. Listen to what you guys were just saying, BG and type. Is that, um, you know, I do what I do because of this right here. You know, um, man, just creating a space and an outlet for free thinkers, for, you know, to get that, you know, free lunch, that that brain food. I like to say nightcap is food. It's brain food. And I think that I've always said when I look at my culture, I look at the babies, I look at the kids, they're just suffering from lack of knowledge. You know, mm -hmm. success and failure are just learned behavior. And our people mm -hmm. don't have the, the, the blueprint for success. I didn't have it. So basically, I, after doing what I, you know, achieving what I've achieved, I wanted to create a space, man, where our people could get that food. And I'm happy, man, that you brothers appreciate it. And I'm happy that you guys are doing what you guys are doing. And that's how we keep this culture going forward. It, it really is. And, and to be honest with you, uh, we've been trying to um, have you on the show for a few months. And we, we've been yeah. able to. <laughs> I've been busy, why. man. Oh, no, 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 I get it. No, I get it. But also, I mean, some of that's our responsibility because, uh, we couldn't make it to um, to the nightcap live and do the do the other circumstance. But the reason that we wanted to have you on the show has kind of shifted a little. Um, I'm gotcha. very interested in having a conversation around the current culture. Um, but mm -hmm. before we even get into a conversation about the about race and uh, really uh, something you said that that was interesting, and I actually agree with it about racism being more of an ideology. Um, yeah. Can we spend some time first just talking about who you are, um, how you yeah. got into journalism? Uh, yeah. I know you spent some time in, in, in New York, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew up, you know, I grew up in the U.S. Virgin Islands, you know, um, just regular working folks. My mom was a nurse, father's a minister, you know, just um, regular working people. And I remember growing up and seeing just like how life certain people had and certain people didn't. And from a young age, I never liked that. You know, that, that's very telling of an artist. That's very telling of a, of a creator where you come into the world and you see something lacking and you want to add to it. So I didn't know how to. You know, I, I don't come from money, so I, I didn't know how to change this course. I remember being in high school and being upset. And I felt like the administrators of this society as a whole didn't expect me and my kind to really do much. And if you're a kid and you're overachiever, I'm actually doing a documentary called Trap Genius. And it's about kids who are exceptional who aren't born into exceptional environments. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, think, think about it. Because success is a remedy. It's a lot of moving parts. So what happens to those kids in the hood, in the inner city, in the urban environment who are exceptional? Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, they get destroyed. You know, so I was one of those kids that really didn't fit. And I was frustrated. So... When I went to college, one of my professors was like, you know, I've, I've always been a writer. I've always wrote, you know, for as long as I can remember. Because when I write, I can depict and create the world I believe in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can literally create that, that world I believe in. So when mm -hmm. I got to college, when I, one of my professors, you didn't think about journalism because, you know, well, as a writer, you get a stable child of income. And also, mm -hmm. I liked journalism because it was creative storytelling. You know, I've always believed art art has to have a purpose. You know, so I felt it was the perfect marriage where I could shed light on issues and empower stories and still be creative. So, yeah, man, I, after, you know, I, I went to New York. I got an internship at the Village Voice. Um, after the Village Voice, I went to Newsday. I was a crimes reporter in Newsday, New York, Newsday newspaper. Then I went to Newsweek magazine in New York and then Time magazine. And after which, my father became ill with Alzheimer's. You know, I speak a lot about my father and how important he is. I want to touch on that real quick. People ask me why I give food. Like people see a lot of, I got legions of young brothers, man, all over the world, all over the country that listen to what I got to say. It's because when my father became ill with Alzheimer's, it happened like 
when I was in high school, but we didn't really know what it was. It was early stages. I had lost, in a sense, a mentor. And in my adult life, brother, I'm just put the call. I'm gonna just keep it real with you guys. Every black male I met in corporate America, Newsweek, Time, they were threatened. It was always them trying to chop the legs from under me. And, and, oh, wow. and I, I've seen that today. I, yeah, it was all black people always cutting each other's legs from under them. We always view each other as a threat. You know, the mm-hmm. young guy coming in, the older guy's like, nah, man. I mean, you trying to come steal my shine and and. and and I've said that the black community's problems is selfishness, and I, I faced that. So I decided, you know what? In in life, brothers, you got two options. When when you hit a, when you when you come against hardships, you can become bitter, and then you could become that same ugly person that that hurt you, or you could say, well, you know what? I'm gonna break this cycle. Mm-hmm. Nobody mentored me. Nobody threw me a rap. I'm a, I'm gonna throw some people a rap. That's why, you know, I do a lot of work with brothers, man, because we got to take our homes and responsibilities. So, yeah, I mean, that that was one of my driving forces. So after I started writing for the Miami Herald, became, you know, I, I, I created the first beat in America where people, where I covered the poverty beat, where I write about poor people, because in American media, well, media, period, the poor, the lives of the poor are not covered because they don't buy anything, hence the consumers and advertisers. The advertisers don't care about them, and, you know, media is run by advertising. So that's why the working poor, the urban community, is often neglected in media. It's not mm-hmm. sometimes it's racial, but a lot of it is they're not a buying power. So, you know, the advertisers want to see stories with people who are buying their products. So basically, man, after that, Trick Daddy called me, man. Trick is like, man, I'm, I'm one of your biggest, I'm one of your biggest fans. You know, I would love for you to pen my life story. So I got with Trick. I spent three years with him penning that story. Simon and Schuster, MTV Books. The book came out. It was like the first book, a memoir of a hip hop artist that the New York Times really took serious and gave us like it, New York Times called it one of the pop music gems of 2010. You know, and after that, it was just time for me to create my own space, utilizing the the, the grounding and, and, and what I've learned as a professional journalist in that in the establishment and not taking that know-how to our people, right? Mm-hmm. Taking that because what I would see with a lot of shows in our culture, it was disrespectful. You know, mm-hmm. when, when a reporter would interview a bird man, they'll talk about his grills or who he's beefing with. We're talking about a guy who grew up in the hood that's, that, that made millionaires and now is the CEO of arguably the most influential record label on the planet. So why are you not getting into the mind of Birdman? Why are you mm-hmm. not taking us seriously? So that was one of my driving forces to create a space where we don't look like caricatures anymore. Because what we got to understand, brothers, is that the images that are put out of us it's what is adding to create this climate. Black men are killed by police. I don't know if any of you guys are noticing. No one really cares. There's a level of desensitized. The black male is like no one has empathy. Like the guy is on the floor with his chest open, and white people in this country trying to figure out a way to justify this. So that tells me they don't even see us as human. And that has a lot to do with the images being put out of us so what happens is the subconscious mind says automatically, well, he's a thug, he's a degenerate, and he deserves to die. Mm-hmm. And that's the images in media, the images in music that's trying to put out. So what I really what Nightcap was destined to do, its purpose to do, and I'm judging from you guys and, man, the support I get from around the world, man, is that I'm creating a space to show us in another light. Mm-hmm. Like we have values, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, and, and, and people, how did it come about? That's how it came about, a desire to empower, man. And, and, because, and, and people ask, so why, why did I pick the artists? Right now, hip-hop are rockers. They're the most influential voices on the planet. So, I okay. mean, whoever is racist doesn't want to accept that. It is what it is. They have mm-hmm. replaced the rockers, and these guys are now the kids. They're gods for these children. Like, they're raising children. In the mm-hmm. absence of, of, of fathers in, in homes, these guys are raising people's kids by what they say. Even in, in white America, you can't, mm-hmm. you can't hate black people when your children are 
your, we are the soundtrack to your lives. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, mm -hmm. it'll be hard for you to hate black people when your children are worshiping a Kendrick Lamar. So my mm -hmm. thing was, okay, we're going to sit with, I'm going to sit with Kendrick. I'm going to sit with 50. And we're going to, we're going to speak that real. We're going to speak that mm -hmm. real to these kids, to these youth that's going to make them live a better and positive life than that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is. You know, my father is a minister, so in a lot of ways, in a weird way, NICAP is my ministry, in a way. You know what I'm saying? If you kind of understand. Yeah. You feel me? That is validation, I think, in, in just our observation and tuning in um, to, your, to your interviews. It, it, it really kind of gives us the encouragement to stay in this lane because this lane is not really a it's popular hard. one. No. Yeah, not, it's not really <laughs> a popular one. And I, and I guess the question would be, when you come at those parts, because you've had, like you said, a little booster, you've had Birdman. I'm going to tell you all, man, I'm happy you asked that question. I'm going to tell brothers this, man. I'm, I'm going to eliminate the word positive. I think I've been able to thrive in the lane I'm in because I don't mm -hmm. preach to people. I don't preach to people. I don't lecture people. I think what happens with a lot of the quote-unquote righteous, positive voices, they too come off like they're pushing an agenda. They, right. they, they too come off like it ain't really about positivity. That's a brand they're pushing to get money, right? To be real with you, man, I mean, I, I just got back from NYL. I rock him. I asked him to come up there and do a show with him. I mean, this is rock him. He doesn't do interviews. What it is, like he told me, he said, man, we need you in the culture because you're giving the kids food and knowledge, but, you, but in an authentic manner. And let me explain. Mm -hmm. When I did my Ocho Cinco interview with Chad, I opened mm -hmm. up about my infidelities with women. I opened up about my issues with staying faithful. So what it is, I think I've been able to thrive because people don't see me as preaching or lecturing them or being phony because I think our culture has seen so many false prophets Mm -hmm. That people are automatically cynical of anyone mm -hmm. who, I guess, quote unquote, spits knowledge. What I do, bro, I'm I'm a, I'm aware. What I do, man, is just I'm living my life, and I want to have a fruitful life, and I ask the questions that's going to help me have a fruitful life, and all of you have a fruitful life. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a human being searching for the truth. And I think, to your point, the lane, this lane is hard. People ask me that all the time. Like, dude, how did you, you're like the one man on this shit, on this little boat. <laughs> and people ask me that all the time. And this is what I tell them. Lies will die, my brother. The truth will remain. And let me explain. A couple years ago when I started Nightcap, I've always been blessed with a third eye. Like, that's my thing. I could see things before people see it coming. Mm -hmm. End of the day, this, this, this ignorance, this gimmick three is going to die. And let me explain why I know it's going to die. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you, you go to McDonald's, they'll have a new burger, they'll have a new Sunday, but you always go for those fries. When you have a positive brand that's empowering people's lives, it can only grow. It'll take a long time because it's easier to attract people's attention by ignorance and the shock value. But mm -hmm. when you give them food for their soul, they got to come to that because we get older. We all want the same things. We want to have a good life. Eventually, people are going to look at those reality shows and be like, you know what? I'm over this. What the hell is this? Man? I'm mm -hmm. is nothing. So that, you're going to outgrow that. So I tell everyone mm -hmm. that's in a conscious, empowering space, it's going to take longer. That's just what it's going to be. But when it starts to hit, I just said I, got a, I, wanna, I was with Rakim. And I, I'm an independent brand. Rakim, he wasn't on CNN. He didn't invite MSNBC. He invited me. Because the truth, bro, when you, when you walk in love and you have a purpose, you tap into that purpose, and that purpose to uplift society, first of all, the creator, I don't know if you believe in God or not. Some people don't. But the universe and the creator it, is going to support that. <laughs> it's going to mm -hmm. support that, you mm -hmm. know, because you're doing God's work. It's going to take, and, and, and people think it takes longer. Let me explain something. Perception is a hell of a thing. I have mm. a huge cult following, right? The problem is what's promoted on the mainstream will make it look like everyone wants this ignorance. That's not true. Because if that mm. was true, I would not be existing. I would not be surviving. Mm -hmm. What it is, in our culture, we want this positive food. 
the machine and the establishment, they're just not giving us that outlet. So I decided that's where I come in to provide that service because we want it. We want mm -hmm. it. It's just mm -hmm. not popularized. So my job is to popularize the Rakim, the conscious artists, the conscious voices, the conscious thought. That's my job. And that's the reason why we want to have you on the show was because I, I, I agree 100% and in, 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 in authenticity essentially outlasting um, and authenticity and truth um, outlasting um, what we're seeing today. That's the reason why I feel like – that's the reason why I called you a visionary in, in the beginning of the show is because long term um, what you are – uh, what you're putting out is really what's gonna what's gonna last. Uh, yeah. The question I have for you is uh, just to continue along, just your, what you're doing now. Did you fit in in corporate America? Like, what was your experience like in corporate? No, nah, I didn't America? fit in. I didn't fit in at all, man. They came from my head. They wanted to put me on a man. They want to put me in front of firing squads, kill me. Um, I didn't, and I have nothing against corporate America, but a guy like me won't fit in corporate America. I mean, especially a black guy. And you understand what corporate America does, no disrespect to anyone in corporate America, but I'll give you an example. Say you have a powerful brother that's speaking truth to his people that really want to uplift his people. I'm going to tell you what, what they're going to do with that brother. They're going to give him a six-figure job. It's going to be called Urban Relations Advisor, which means niggas just stay in the corner, shut up, and don't bother nobody. Mm -hmm. that's, Let's just keep it real. That's, that's <laughs> right. the corner is a, is a corner office, Negro. You know what I'm the saying? Because is, and, and there's also that golden handcuff because they gave you them. Yeah, the corn, yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? If we don't own, brother, a man will let you sleep in his house. Man, he might let you even sleep sleep with his wife, but he's not giving you the keys to his house. Mm -hmm. And we gotta respect that. When I get arguments from my friends who are actors, I said, man, I'm sick of y'all, man. If I see one more black actor complain about not getting an Oscar, I'm a man. It's like, that's their thing. Build mm -hmm. your own thing. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to have control over anything unless you own it. So in corporate America, I figured it out. The strong, domineering black male, he's not going to thrive in that environment. The mm -hmm. black men that thrive and rise in corporate America, they're tongue-in-cheek out of control. I wasn't going to be controlled. I just was not going to be controlled. So it, it's a matter of, I mean, I, I kind of saw the writing on the wall, you know, but when I was at, I don't take it personal with anybody because I view life as necessary things to get me to where I'm at now. If Time Magazine, if Newsweek, if the Miami Herald had treated me with the, with the, with the you know, with the big spreads, I would be still stuck in someone's cubicle answering to some guy named Tom that don't respect me or my culture. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, I mean, for me, it was crazy because at that age back then, I didn't know it. Back then, I just felt, man, these people coming after me for no reason. What I found very disheartening, though, I don't mind when white people or non-black people do anything to me. You know, they, they're not entitled to, that's, that's not my tribe. I love everybody. I'm part of the human tribe. But you understand what I'm saying. What mm -hmm. I found in corporate America Man, it was all that other black person trying to knife me, man. It was always yeah. that other black, especially that older <laughs> black guy. <laughs> you know, I guess he felt that he finally got the seat at the table. See, how those clowns think, what, 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 how they're programmed is that, okay, there's a huge room full of food and, and loaves of bread. Now, some twisted way the white world has taught that black guy that's only one slice. And he got to fight with his people over that one slice. Mm -hmm. You guys ever notice, if you look at media, man, these white actors, white musicians, they be coming out of the woodworks. Mm -hmm. Actors. You ever notice they use the same black people for everything in movies? Oh, definitely. And they, definitely. They, they, like, pick the one or two black people, just use them for everything. Like, you know what, man? We done, we done let two of you Negroes in. That's enough for the 10-year period. Let me give you a joke. When I was, we were shopping the book, we were trick daddy. Mm -hmm. This one publisher, I don't remember which publisher. You know, I, I don't have a filter. I'll call him out, but I forgot which which publisher it was. <laughs> the guy said we we already we already have a book with a rapper. Yeah. What does that mean? Mm. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? I done read a hundred books about the life of some Jewish business person, dog. Mm -hmm. 
What does that mean, you already? That's why it was Prodigy's book. Well, we already have a book like that. And then we didn't get any deals because they, they, one guy asked me, Peter, there's not enough shoot, shoot, gang, gang stuff in the, in oh, the, wow. in the book. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not enough gang, gang stuff. Because there is one thing America wants to see from, from the black male. It's chaos, confusion, and madness. That's what they mm -hmm. want to see from us. Mm -hmm. the, if, if you look at television, there is no strong, dominant, honorable black male. If it's a black guy, he's very effeminate, and it has nothing to do with people who are, you know, sexual orientation. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the the mass I'm talking about emasculation of a black man. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about his sexual orientation. Because I'm mm -hmm. sick any time you talk like this, people think you junk, you got some. I love everybody. I'm talking about the emasculation of the black male. So mm -hmm. if a black male is on a, if, if he's going to be put on a pedestal, he has to dump, he has to be a eunuch. They got to take your, they got to take your nuts and chop them off. Mm -hmm. No, literally, they got to do that, what they used to do. They're the eunuchs. They used to castrate them. So That's he right. has to be this emasculate. His voice can't be too deep. I think Chris Rocket wrote a column about that. You know, I remember I did a rehearsal for Fusion. I, I, I don't, I call people out. And the, I go in there and the guy says, oh, we got a real brother in here. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so what, what I accepted, my bros, on corporate America was that I just had to build my own thing. And I knew it was going to be hell, which it has been. You know, it's hell. You know, being an entrepreneur is hell. It's, it's, and then when you finally start to see the light, you start to look back. But I kind of knew... Even when I started Nightcap, I said, God, I, I, this is not something. Because I remember some people were trying to shop the show to different people, and no one, could want to, no one knew why this thing wasn't getting picked up. Like, I have the biggest stars, arguably right. better conversation, better access, better time, but no one is breathing on this thing from that top level. So mm -hmm. I knew it was something I'm doing they're not happy with. And I figured it out. If, if I'm going to be... Can y'all imagine if we got a bunch of aware brothers, man? Man, I get emails. I get emails from brothers in, 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 in Crenshaw, Bloods, Crips. They tell me, man, we in the dope, we in the trap house watching Nightcap. I get people <laughs> emailing me saying that, like, this one girl blew my mind. She's in foster care. She was like, your show, your show raised me. Now, I didn't have wow. a father or mother, so your conversations taught me how to live life. Wow. Like these, these are the messages I get from, from kids. From, that's why I kept going. You guys ask me, like, how do you keep going as hell? You keep going when you realize the people need it, man. <laughs> now, I get all kind of messages. People say, man, a school teacher, she said, man, this kid, he was in a gang. He started watching your show. He, he got out the gang. Now he's doing straight A's in school. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, so stuff like that is, is you know, I got to keep going. So, so not even a BET, they wouldn't jump on the show. You know, BET, we had a conversation. You know, we got on the phone, and I don't know what happened. You know, no, I just think, man, at the end of the day, I'm not. I don't believe in conspiracy theories. What it is is black and white. These are businesses. They're looking for that quick fix. Gonna make that quick buck. But you know, right. that's always been the the era of of businesses, right? Steve right. Jobs goes in there with his idea. They laughed him out the building. Now nah, he's Steve Jobs. It's, it's funny how business companies think. And if you're not a business person, you believe that businesses and companies want to grow. They don't. That is not how the corporate engine works. They don't. The goal of a business is to maintain their revenue stream. So mm -hmm. they'll be like, Peter, wow, this is provocative. This is a visionary. Who want to take But I ain't taking a risk. <laughs> you know what? Wow, yeah, like, man, this is amazing. Peter, I love you. I'm your biggest fan. I see, you, bro, all these network execs, they talk to me. They see me, man, you're like this, you're like that. But I ain't cutting that check because I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, and, the, and what, what, what happens is it takes one person, usually, whoever that person is. To, to to you that bone, or in my case, you said the hell with the bone, and you stop chasing the light, and you become the light. So my mm. thing has always been, 
Mm. I haven't been working to get picked up. Like, I've never been doing this to get picked up. I've been do. I've treated Nightcap like its own little CNN, you right. know, and I get offended. And I'll tell you and all, anybody with independent movement or trying to build an independent, independent movement, stop using the word mainstream. And let me explain. If I feel like that mainstream thing means something, I'm insulting my, I'm insulting you guys. I'm insulting my all my audience. I'm telling you guys that I don't feel you guys are good enough. You, you kind of get what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's definitely, telling, definitely. You see what I'm saying? So I said, hell with all those labels, bro. I, I, bro, once you have a, a machine, you can feed, you pay your bills, you're good. You're straight. It eventually will get to where you got to go to. But it's go, if you want to choose the path of righteousness, of truth, it's going to be. You think, guys, you got to remember something, man. This world is built a certain way, right? So people at the top, they maintain at the top because it's less competition. If, mm-hmm. I, if, if the more knowledgeable Negroes out there, the less stupid people, they can't exploit. Right. So they'll tell me, Peter, keep the keys <laughs> to us, man. <laughs> stop, stop telling the sheep. Stop giving the sheep the know-how. Keep them dumb and stupid. Because I'm going to tell you all right now, when I, when I travel and I connect with life and powerful, wealthy people, it's amazing. The books they read, the content that they, 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 they feed themselves on, dude, it's totally different. Bro, some of them books you can't even find in the library. Man. It's like, no, that, bro, their whole level of thinking and what they see, black people are feeding themselves on everything that's going to keep them poor. Let, 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 let's just break it down. We're flashy, we're tangible. Mm-hmm. That's what keeps you poor. Right. Wealthy people don't spend money on this type of nonsense. They don't. Wealthy people don't go on Instagram showing off some shoe. I, don't, bro, I can't even pronounce it. My little cousin in college, he got his little girlfriend that be watching these silly, these these silly reality shows, and now she want him to buy her this and buy. I, this stuff is outrageous. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like we are we are backwards as a culture. The, dude, the tail is leading the head. And let me see what I'm saying. I don't care who takes it. I don't give a – you guys know I'm candid. We can't have a culture where street rappers, where young people are looking to street rappers for some level of God. That doesn't make sense. And even a street rapper will tell you that. Mm-hmm. He'll tell you, man, I'm, I'm from the streets, man. I don't know why y'all coming to me for – what we have now is the tail leading the head. We mm-hmm. have people on a reality show acting like monkeys, and these are the people the kids are idolizing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what can the kids learn from those from those? Yeah, people? you had a statement where you said you got you got dumb niggas listening to other dumb niggas was the yeah. idea's word. Yeah. But, but yeah. what you're saying is actually factual in that. It's very uh, factual. We got the people that are kind of leading this next generation and and leading leading the next uh, our youth are the people that you see on the reality TV shows yeah. that that really have very little substance. A friend of mine is a school teacher, man. She said fourth grade <laughs> little girls all want to be strippers. Play, play. Oh, want to be strippers. Yep. I, you had the same similar story. I had the exact time. same. I had a. One of the uh, one of the ladies I knew, uh, school teacher, she said uh, she had a lot of girls that said they want to be video vixens. Now, at what oh, point? <laughs> and that's exactly what she told me a few years ago. And so that was what that was at least four or five years ago when she told me that. And now it's it's even evolved into into strippers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's um. And then all the boys want to sell dope. I mean, let me tell you something, man. One of my nightcap started in the streets. My first, my core fan base are gangsters. No, literally, like that's it was weird. I don't know how it happened, but it just happened like that. Where the prisons, the gangs, like these are the guys who really, like, yo, I think I'll go to Inglewood, and it's like the streets. And and what's interesting is those guys are like, man. What the hell? Like, we're not living this because we want to live this. Hell, like, they want to be squares. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, what, what, what I found is it's this misappropriation of, it's just bizarre. And honestly, a lot of my discussions with, with those brothers being on the road with Trick, 
literally inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing because I got a cousin, man. He, he in and out of prison his whole life, and I'll never forget it. He was driving somewhere. He pulled a call, and he, you know, he took his pistol out. He said, man, Pete, I'm ready to die behind this room. I'm ready to die behind some positive because I, I spent my whole life doing negative. You know what he told me? He said, man, I hate these rappers, man. I said, what you, mm-hmm. And he said, it has nothing to do with hate or jealousy. Mm-hmm. The, he said, these garbage, these devils, he said, man, they're worse. He said, some of them are worse than a Klansman because mm-hmm. it's like you know better and you're giving your people poison. He was like, Peter, I got sons. These devils are encouraging my son to live a lifestyle that led me to prison that destroyed my life. Mm-hmm. And when he said it, it blew my mind, man. Yeah. And he what, asked, he what, said, role, he, what role and responsibility do they have, in your opinion? What role does um, like, And I told artist, him this. Mm-hmm. And this is what I told him. I said, man, we got to take shots at the, we got to look at the guy in them buildings, the executives. Because at the end of the day, what people don't understand, a rapper is, the, is, is a worker. I don't think you understand this. Let, let's get past the hype. Let's get past the fame. They're employees. You got They're employees. Bro, the streets are the same thing. It's always the corner boy that's getting the busted. He got all the flashy. But no, it's that square supplier. Mm-hmm. So let's mm-hmm. look at who owns these record labels. Who owns these radio stations? Because I bet you if I come in there and I have a rhyme that's disrespectful to Jews, that's disrespectful to Italians, it's not getting on the radio. Like, how right. does Little Wayne record making fun of, of, of Medgar Evers? What was it? Was it Medgar Evers? Was it who was it he made fun of? It? Who, what, what? Remember that record he saw? Yeah, Emmett Till. Emmett Till. Emmett Till. You think anybody would have made a record dissing a Jewish hero? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Right. Oh, please. Oh, please. You think any level of music that's advocating for Italians to kill each other the way niggas, nigga, I'm going to kill you, nigga, I'm going to diss, bitch, this? you think that's going to, come on, man. So we as a people, though, we got we to gotta respect ourselves more. We got to respect ourselves more and say, you know what? Nah. This I look at hip-hop. I look at just the culture. Brother, these little girls, these young boys and girls calling each other the B word like it's second knowledge. Like it's just a mm-hmm. word. Like, it, 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 dude, they talk to each other like you whole. Like, like it's just a regular term. Mm-hmm. Does that parallel to what we see from uh, other, I guess, well known figures like a Stacey Dash or Charles Barkley in their comments and commentary about the black community? Well, I mean, the problem with those people are. If you're not helping the culture, you see how critical I am, but, but I'm in the culture. Right, So the, the right, same right. gangbangers I'm talking about, that's my homie. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, dude, the same thing I'm telling you guys on the phone, if I'm in Liberty City in the projects, I'm going to tell these brothers to their face. Right. Like one, of, I got family members that's dope boys. And I tell them as much as they can, stick a hair in it, you the devil, and you giving your people poison. Right. And their favorite comment, well, Peter, if I don't sell it, somebody else will sell it. So the difference between Stacey Dash is, come on, man. The difference these people are, it's a gimmick. They're fitting a role because that's how they get checks. Mm-hmm. Fox News needs an attractive black woman to slam her own people. Stacey Dash is it. That's how she's getting a check. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you kind of know when people authentically are speaking and criticizing their culture because they love their people or they just getting a check. You know the difference. You know the difference. You know the difference. Willie D. Willie D. said the same thing, and um, and that and this song that he released, Coons. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've heard that, but you should. I gotta hear it. it. No, I haven't heard. It. I gotta hear yeah, it. Yeah, you should go to YouTube when you get a chance. And he basically is saying the exact same thing. You said he's calling them out. He called out Stacey yeah. Dash, um, Stephen A. Smith, a few people that he called Charles Barkley, and he said he's gonna do a part two, three, and four. Uh, yeah, he's going to continue to call out, call out uh, black folks. Yeah, basically, contribute to the culture. My biggest attacks have been hurled against the black educated middle class because people in the inner city, my cousin, what the hell? Who they gonna help? Right. They running from the police, child support, right. this, this. Who? How they gonna elevate anybody? They, they, right. The people that got to elevate 
You bring up the Boosie interview. Let me tell y'all something about that Boosie interview. I wanted to talk. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about yeah, let, the Boosie let, interview. Let's talk about this Boosie interview. I so, actually thought Boosie was was on point with some of his comments. He was on point with everything. Everything. Uh-huh. So, so we, so I released this interview, and I've been doing nightcaps for so long, and you know, I stay in my own world. I keep doing what I'm doing. I, I don't pay attention that much to anything. I don't care who's on, who's doing what, what. I don't, you know that. Key to success, man, stay in your lane, put the blinders on, build with your audience, build with your people, and, and act like the rest of the world don't even exist. And that's what I do. So the Boosie interview just starts blowing up. So I see these black people at, like, the black girl. I don't know her name. I don't pay attention to these people because I think a bunch of them are just clowns. Um, I think it was the Huffington Post, Ebony, MSNBC. I still see all these black journalists at these places slamming Boosie, slamming the show, slamming interview. And I said, wow. I've been doing these conversations. You Negroes ain't paying attention, but I get it. So me and, me and Boosie, two black men, have a real, raw, honest conversation right. about what's going on in our community. But you Negroes felt embarrassed because, I guess, you work up there in your office and in front of white people, you don't want to look like, oh, the where, where, where the, where the, where the worst race. Well, 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 let me explain something. There's a point, black people. I repeat, what, what did I say in the beginning of this conversation? We are selfish people. Mm-hmm. My boozy conversation. If you're an educated black person, you got a great job. You, that wasn't for you. That wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. That was for these kids, man. That mm-hmm. idolized Boosie. When I said, when I looked Boosie dead in the eye and I said, I think it's ridiculous that people are glorifying the fact he went to jail and he told me as a man, he said, I think it's ridiculous too. Y'all got to send up respect and the power of that moment. Mm-hmm. But what did those suckers do? They got embarrassed because it's about them. It's all about them. Mm-hmm. That Boosie was for these kids. Mm-hmm. But it's a point of uh, uh, the people, my, my, my dudes. We can't even come as one on an interview. Mm-hmm. Black people can't even. I got a rule, man. I don't have to agree with everything you guys do. But can we just agree to move forward? That's right, man. Mm-hmm. You got black people beefing about the way the protesters are going. <laughs> I'm not a oh, man. I have my own issues with that. But I'm not a <laughs> knock for protesters. So you got black people, some people mad about the, the cops. Oh, why are you mad about it? So we fighting over the way we gotta we fight over every damn thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so my thing is, we look at this Boosie conversation. I'm expecting my brothers and sisters to say, "Wow, that's a wow, that's a real conversation, man. That's unfiltered. Wow, salute to these brothers that's putting it on the line." Mm-hmm. But, that, but people gotta make it about themselves. Um. That boozy conversation, like everything I do, is for the kids, man. It's for the mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. If you're a grown adult, I mean, it's for the kids. So it had a lot of support, but it had a lot of attacks from the professionals. And, and I've always said black professionals in this country are the weakest people I've ever met in my life. You know, mm-hmm. they, they spend their lives going to galas and being mm-hmm. happy that the firm the white firm just promote them. They go tell their family, yeah, I'm the only white guy in the firm. I'm the only white. Get the hell out of here with that corny mess, man. Why you sound? You a lame. Like, you think about what I'm saying, bro. Like, what happened in this generation, bro, this is, this is what happened, man. Like, oh, the, the, you okay, we got the Generation X, which was us, me, the millennials. You got the baby boomers. The problem is, they didn't move the needle forward, bro. Right. Mm-hmm. They got a good mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. They got full of themselves. They bragged about the, 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 the car they drove. Mm-hmm. But none of them moved the needle. Bro, let's keep it real. All of your black billionaires, millionaires, and forward-thinking visionaries that altered culture, they was in that other generation. So you make a very interesting point because 
Um, I kind of, I mean, well, I do believe that integration is probably one of the, the worst things to happen to black folks. And even, and even the, the issue that I am, and why I believe with you about the, this idea of racism being an ideology, yeah. um, is because I really believe that the fight that black America should be having right now is more of a classism fight within itself. Economics. 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 And what my argument has always been is why is the degree of separation between the black girl in the hood and Oprah Winfrey so so big of a gap? That's a tangible thing that black folks can address. But the reason why that's not the conversation is because you got the top black 1% that is trying to compete with the white white folks because of that selfishness. And I learned yep. that in 2007, 2008, when I attended a forum, that's when I realized that this conversation about race in America, it's a commercial conversation that's benefiting the top 1% of black America yeah. and white America. Yeah. That's why you don't see right. black yeah. America advancing is because we're not, we should be focused on the, on the, on the classism conversation. There's one of those 1% black people right now they're going to write their little book about race in Baltimore, they're going to make a mint, they're going to have dinner with their white intellectual friends. Bro, the biggest disconnect, urban America has no respect for any of these people. If you look at it, bro, there's not one urban America, and I told a friend of mine that who was in that 1% bubble, urban mm-hmm. black America has no respect for CNN, MSNBC, Corner West, or any of these people. Nope. They don't know them, they don't mess with them, they don't... The biggest, you have all these black intellectuals get on MSNBC talking about how to save the community. The community, they don't, they don't know these people. Dude, these people have no conne- connection. It, the, we have the biggest disconnect in black yep. America right now. Yep. Yep. Tell, yep. Because, so what happens is when we have these marches and protests, do you notice that the people in the community are not, they're not marching, bro. It's nope. a bunch of professionals who are traveling to go march. But the yep. people in the real community, they're not a part of that. No. Nope. Nope. Because what happens is we are the only mm. culture that doesn't believe in building each other up. Right. We just don't. It's like you said. We have this thing where, man, I left the hood. I don't want to be around the Negroes. It's a weird paradigm where classism and economics is the real war. That, because, mm-hmm. bro, a strong, empowered economic group, I'll, t- I'll tell you this, you're not going to be just killing us like that. I'm not trying to toot my horn, but when I have a son, my son is not going to get smacked around by cops, y'all. It just, it just, America respect money, it respect class, it respect economics, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. It just mm-hmm. does. It mm-hmm. just does. And we have, a, we have a lot of Negroes, like you said, who, I don't know why, I don't know. Bro, you don't have to live in the hood. You could be successful. But you don't got to, you just totally turn your back on your people. <laughs> you just totally just, well, man, y'all just die. That's exactly why I, like I say, I attended, I attended a forum in 2008 at, at Texas <laughs> Southern University that was put yeah. on by MSNBC about this conversation yeah. about racism. We're eight years, ten years later. And we're still having the same conversation because it's profit in it MSNBC. Yes, it's profit in CNN to put on it these is. town halls, and that's the yes. reason why they continue that conversation. You have the same yes. blacks participating on the panels yes. that continue <laughs> to be the voice of "quote unquote" yes. Black America, and yes. that's not even fixing the issue. There's these people that they put up to be the voice. The black community is not messed with them. I'm telling you, it's the disconnect. No, it's crazy. it's a disconnect. It's not, they're not <laughs> even totally. connected with the people. No, they're not. They're not. I mean, I see some of these rioters and these people they have up there. And I'm curious. Bro, I support everybody. So I'm curious. So I go to the neighborhood. Yo, you heard of this? Who the, Peter, Peter, who the hell is that? What is, what is that Atlantic magazine? What is that? I, I don't know what that is. What is that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm telling you, the disconnect is insane. It, it, uh-huh. it, it's crazy. But like you said, they keep feeding us race because it makes money, man. It's America. It makes money. Because it's profit is, in MSNBC. It's profit in ESPN yeah. to have that conversation, but it's not yeah. a genuine, authentic, truth conversation. It's, not. it's no, a conversation it's not. that's been repeated and has been on cycles for years, which is why, yeah. which is why I've always said that 
forget the conversation with it. And then you're trying to convince a group of people to change that's not even wanting to change. That's the wrong no. conversation. The, the truth is, bro, I look at a lot of these shows. It was a why do I can keep Night Gap going. I'm not slamming people, but I look at these shows. What are y'all doing? Like, I look at a lot of content. What is the purpose of this right here? Exactly. Like, what are we doing right now? Exactly. We keep just keeping it real stuff, but nobody cares, man. I was listening to Arnold Lewis Farrakhan on the interview he did on The Breakfast Club, and he, and he actually, in my opinion, provided the blueprint on on how to address on, uh, the people that think that they're the leaders in the black community aren't the leaders. The they're not. That they're, they're not, not the leaders. <laughs> it has totally transitioned to athlete and conscious rappers who really yes. have the yes. ear of of, of yes. the youth and the people. But you have yes. these old <laughs> civil rights leaders, these old. People yeah. that have been placed in these positions yeah. Yeah. that don't want to let the that don't want to let the it's a changing of the guard to be honest with I'm you. A, I'm gonna tell you what what it is, man. It's like this, and I've been saying this: the narrative has changed, and these guys, no disrespect. What was what, 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 the brother that's John Lewis? John, no disrespect to you, John, but don't tell me to be nonviolent right now. These exactly. kids, they don't want to hear that crap. They're not going exactly. to hear it. How long are you going to keep telling them this crap when people keep getting killed? Exactly. So what is it, I'm going to tell you what is, what, is, what is going on, and that's remember I told you about my experience, experience in corporate America. For John Lewis or any of these leaders to say, you know what, my tactics is not relevant right now, that's the, he's going to have to look in the mirror and say his legacy isn't as – in his mind, that's staining his legacy. So the problem yeah. is we have a lot of these people like Tap, all these guys, they live for their legacy instead of – I'm the type of guy, right, if, if I have an ideology and it's wrong and it's going to hurt my people, hey, I'm wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you say about the ideology of racism, what, what, what I bring up. Racism is like religion. Mm -hmm. I cannot convince you to believe in God if you don't believe in God. Right. Racism, if it's rooted in your DNA, bro, there's nothing I can do to change your mind. And I'm not going to spend my life trying to get you to like me. But what I'm going to do is build an economic base with my people so my money and my, my, my economic strength will neutralize your BS. And we see how, how media is dictating how people are moving. Most of the, the anger and the frustration um, that I see locally is being sparked by just basically what people see on television or are listening yeah. to on the radio yeah. or the newspaper. How important do you think it will be if this is going to be a sustained revolution or movement towards justice and, and reform and all these things? How important is it going to be for the, the culture, the community, to get hold of sound media outlets to convey the type of narrative and messages that we'll need to, to generate, you know, this positive flow of change. I mean, what, what's going to happen? One or two things going to happen, man. We might not want to accept it, but America was built on blood and, and chaos and anarchy and racism. And mm -hmm. it may be destroyed by that same thing because there's just a group of people in America that they don't want to give up that racism. Stuff. They just don't. Mm -hmm. like they, and sadly, I think there's more of them the more there's more people that hate blacks in this country than that lo than love blacks. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Media is probably the most important thing. It ha it's the most important thing. Um, ownership of us narrating our own stories. Us. Okay, the interview I had with Rakim. You know, we we, we talked about the five percenters. Right. What American media institution is going to bring up the five percenters in an interview? No, <laughs> no, no. They don't even know Yours. what it is. <laughs> right. They don't even know what it is. They don't even know what it is when Jay Z, Carmelo, all these guys rocking the all five percent of. That's mm -hmm. that five percent of black men are the the honest of God. What mm -hmm. CNN guy is going to ask that question? What you guys are God? Who the hell with you? I'm not saying you guys are God on the air. <laughs> <laughs> you want me, you want me to tell my listeners that you guys are. 5% of you guys are like, my God, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> think about it. Like, right, you will right. never see a CNN special on the 5 percenters where you have black men saying that, that they're God. Really? 
But see, they could do a show and they calling themselves they they're the forefathers of society and Christopher Columbus and George Washington, right? And, right? right. Yeah. But that this is why it's essential we control that bro, we don't even own the outlets upon which we express our pain. Let, let, let me say that again. We don't mm. we don't even own the think think about what I'm saying, man. We don't right. we cannot lead anything, we don't own anything. Can't. Right. It, it just doesn't make sense. And I cannot white people. You know, I'm not even mad at, at Hollywood. If I'm right. a white guy, I'm a producer. I want to see my white friends and white women in the film. I can do that. It's my money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to me, forcing this guy to diversify his content, one, is artificial. And we see it all the time. They throw mm-hmm. some black in there, and you're looking at this. Whoa, 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 what's going on? They just, they just trying right now. But to me, if a white guy wants to run, film his movie, put up his money, and have an all white cast, he could do that. His money, it's his mm-hmm. money. It's his what money. black people got to do is build, create your own movies, create your own companies. You don't like the fact that black people are not being on TV? Okay, let's have our own channel. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I can't do the constant. Fight for diversity thing, guys. I, I don't do that. That's a waste of my time. I just it's kinda like it's kinda like weak. Like, guys, can you please give me an opportunity? I, I can't do that, man. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't live. Can't what? live like that, man. We we can agree that the narrative is, is, is changing as far as the as far as in my opinion, I think and I think like I said, I heard an honorable Louis Farrakhan say this, is really the voice um, of, of the youth right now are the are the athletes, the artists, uh, yeah, the artists, the artists. artists. The artists. Uh, yeah. Why is there such a disconnect between the artists and the John Lewis's and the Jesse Jacksons and the <laughs> so-called voices that, like you said earlier, that that really aren't connected? I'm gonna tell to you what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. John Lewis, Tavis Smiley. You know what those guys were supposed to do? What's that? They're supposed to elevate. They're supposed to elevate guys like me. They did. Yeah. They yeah. did. Tavis and those guys just held on to themselves. And, and what happens is, you ever notice in black society, a, a person will be very big, and then they just fade from society and they're done. It's because they don't build up anybody else. Right. I got a lot of. I told you all. I got a lot of young brothers around me. That's that's how you live forever. You empower all these guys. You plant the seeds. They didn't do that, man. Mm-hmm. So what happens is there's a disconnect because in life, everything is a changing of the guard. The mm-hmm. artists didn't do it either. That's why a lot of these older artists, the young boys, are like, man, they hell with you. We mm-hmm. were starved. So what was supposed to happen was those older artists groomed the younger artists. Mm-hmm. The older activists, journalists, thinkers, Groom the younger journalists, act, act, activists, thinkers. Because we as journalists, we are actually the most important piece of this puzzle. Because mm-hmm. we're the people in the middle. We're the gatekeepers, dog. Mm-hmm. We're the gatekeepers. So what happened is that no one groomed anybody. So there's a disconnect. Is mm-hmm. John Lewis? He didn't groom that young cat that's coming up. So guess what? He doesn't have a voice to the audience because. The, the 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 journalist and the activist is the bridge between the community and the artist, right? Nightcap is the bridge. Mm-hmm. So without mm-hmm. that without that bridge, of course there's gonna be a disconnect. <laughs> and BG, BG's be a disconnect. been saying that BG's been saying that for years, even with yeah. our platform for us to be the bridge. I got a question, another question. I'm, and I'm gonna single somebody out because I've really been following this this individual, um, and I, I'm interested in your thoughts on on Charlemagne the God. And the reason I ask you specifically about him is because I kind of flip flop on my views on him as on him personally because he empowers his people. If you're in his circle, he empowers you. Uh, mm-hmm. and he empowers, and he's building a legacy. But at the same time. Some of his antics I, I don't agree with. What are your thoughts on someone like a Charlemagne the God? And I'm just interested in that. And if you don't want um, to friend and you don't want to speak on it, 
Yeah, no I don't even have. I don't even have an opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. Um, Do you I think seen... he plays a role in building up the culture and the and the, and the because he has a voice and his voice is steady growing and I can see his him being in the next few years a really influential, even more influential than what he is now. Of course, of course. Um, I don't. I don't have an opinion because. I'm just in a whole no, another lane. So to be fair, right. I can't even make a fair comment on him because I don't watch Breakfast Club. I don't. I don't follow. So I can't. Okay. I can't make a fair assessment of him. You know what I'm saying? Like I said That's earlier, right. I'm in my little box. <laughs> you know what I'm saying people who rock with that, what, what I rock with, rock out with. Um, okay. No doubt. Them, no doubt. No. No doubt. Yeah. Let's talk, no, no, no. Let's, talk, let's talk about that box. Been doing the nightcap thing. Kind of what is the, the outlook this point moving forward? I mean, nightcap is really for urban contemporary pro- progressives, whether you're white, black, or green. So what it is, it's just an outlet for people who I call in the middle. Those of us in the middle who just have a different outlook on life. I think that um, right now it's either right or left. Mm. There's nobody... There's no lane for just progressive people in the in in the middle. I think it's been like that for ages, and I think personally, progressives, the ones in the middle, we we're the ones with all the common sense. Because right. everybody else is fighting, <laughs> everybody else is slamming, everybody else is throwing stunts to get attention. Where we're we're right in the middle. So for me, mm-hmm. it's just building that culture, telling people in the middle, telling the progressives, yo, we, we got a voice, mm-hmm. we got a voice. You know, I think that there's two kind of black men in this country, either just all the way spineless or just all the way talking reckless. Mm-hmm. You know, so for me, when you say my little tunnel, I'm telling you, I don't watch none of this stuff. I, mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't watch TV. That's how people ask, how do I keep Nightcap so original in its thought process? That's how. And, mm-hmm. I mean, some people say, well, that's unfair. Nah, it's, it's kind of like Picasso was a painter. He, didn't, he just did his paint. Because mm-hmm. I just don't want to be inundated with all that nonsense. Right. I don't. It's like a Duval is like one of my biggest support. Like that, that's the homie. And I was actually, I actually wanted to ask you about <laughs> that was what, so. I, so we talked about one of the interviews, Boosie. The other two yeah. interviews was I didn't think you would, I didn't think you would mention Duval, but love Duval. And it's funny because Duval been trying to get me and the boy Charlemagne to, 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 together. So for me. I got love that's for his boy. That's his boy too. Uh huh. That's yeah, he always tries to look. I got love for everybody, man. I don't have an issue. This I'm a, I'm gonna say this. This is my issue. <laughs> there, there, there is a there is there is a meal. We need a balanced meal, right? On a right. plate, you got your veggies. You got your all the cars, you black, got your meat. Mm-hmm. All the black community is getting is. Is there a space for Breakfast Club? Yes. It's entertainment. That's what it is. Cool. There's a space for all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. But can can the progressive, deep thinking, can can that have a space to fly? That's all. In other words, future has a space. I'm not thinking against future, but the, I don't want to hear future on a Monday afternoon when I'm thinking. You get what I'm saying? It's like there's no balance. Like, right. every, the, 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 the ratchet, the, the loud, all, the, nobody is giving. When you watch, watch TV, if I'm white, I could choose. I could watch C-SPAN. I could watch MTV. I could watch. When it comes to black programming, it's just that one negative. And it's funny because me and Duval had this conversation all the time. He's like, Pete, them kids is you didn't need to be hearing. So it's like it's funny because I have all kind of friends, and people will say that Duval is a little bit, rational or whatever, but I think that everyone has everyone has their, 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 what they bring to the table. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is let's just look at it for what it is and let's open our minds and, 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 and people would agree, agree with what I'm saying. Why is the honorable, intellectual, forward-thinking black thought, why is that not out here? Why is right. that not giving room to breathe? That's all I'm I think, saying, I think man. there's a misconception, though, but, but Peter, I think there's a misconception that it is out there. Because I think that when you have the, 
the 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 voices that represent Black America now. That's supposed to be that authentic um, it's, Black but it's fake. voice. But but, 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 we but you and I, but, no, not everybody. We have an ear mm. for it, right? So mm. so we have an ear for it. It's almost like Jay Z made a comment. And I kind of picked up on what you were saying earlier because Jay-Z actually said it with the twerk molly molly twerk molly about white folks listening to black folks and that's raising white America yeah. hip-hop is. But uh, Jay-Z made a comment. Hip-hop, uh, we have a voice for, for the music now. We grew up in an era and a period when music was good. So now we're able to decipher good hip-hop versus bad hip-hop, not to say that Future is a bad rapper, but to your point, mm-hmm. we don't want to hear Future on a Monday. But on a Friday, yeah. when we turn it up, we'll listen to Future. Yeah, and that's right. what I'm so, I don't have a problem with that's the variety, but I'm just saying. But what I'm saying is this right here, though. though. What I'm saying is mm-hmm. this right here, though. You and I have an ear for the fake intellectual or that progressive voice that's being presented before us, so we can decipher mm-hmm. that this is like this is not authentic. This is. This gotcha. new, whatever this black progressive voice is saying, like this is BS. But most people gotcha. don't have that voice. I mean, they don't have that ear. I think, I think we gotta give people more credit. I think they do know that, and that's why. I don't think so. I don't think but hold so. up, think, that's why that space isn't popular. That's why that is. space isn't. There's no one in America right now who has that space and has popularized it. Nobody. Nobody. Because people, you think people people don't know what's fake. They know what's fake. They know what's fake. People okay, let me know give you what's a perfect fake. example. Let me give you a perfect example. Okay. 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 A perfect example is, and I don't know if, the, again, no disrespect that this is a friend of yours, but mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> what's the what's the guy named BG that I keep that I keep harping on um, out of Baltimore? Uh, 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 what did he do? Uh, what did he do on the Ricky Smiley show uh, doing the, the, the top three? Um, what's his name, BG? You know what I'm talking about. Cause I, I, Jeff Johnson. Okay, let me get perfect example. Jeff Johnson. Oh, man. So, but he, yeah, but okay, okay. Let, let's, let's, let's let me use let, let me let me use Jeff Johnson as an example. Personally, I felt like <laughs> there was a point where Jeff Johnson and the voice that he brought to the table was genuine and authentic. I remember that that era. I remember that era, yeah. So you agree with me. But now you agree with me. So now Jeff Johnson. No, okay. I mean, what, what I will say about that, and that's what I'm not telling you. I, that's what I tell you. I don't think he, this is no disrespect to that brother, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. He doesn't carry any influence out here like that, bro. I think, like, I to think, be fair, I like think, you I said, think in our circle, no, between like, you and I. Like you, said, uh-huh. like you said, Charlemagne carries a lot of influence. But I'm trying to tell you. Brit, name a person who is in that progressive, uplifting. There's nobody out here, bro. Because no, that's not, not Charlemagne's lane. That's not those guys' lane. So I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. like you said, I remember when I was in college, I remember Jeff had the BT thing, but I don't think people respect him out here like that. And that's not a slight to him because I don't pay I attention. Think, but I, I'm, think uh, that, you know I think that I think that in, I think that in our in your circle and in our in in our in our circle, I would say. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you, but I think outside of our like consciousness, gotcha. I think I think you would be. I think you. I think I think most people think that that he is more influential than than and and what he says is is authentic and genuine. But I don't think that that's the case. Honestly, I think most people agree with you, bro. Well, I think so because what I'm trying. Okay. I just, I'm out here, Ask man. That, I, okay, think... I would be interested in you asking that question, man. And I'm gonna do the same because I. I I would be interested. I'm saying to the average person out here, this is the issue we're having. I wrote that on Twitter. I said that those with a sound mind who have something of value, and I put this on me too because I used to be a reclusive person, and that's Mm -hmm. why you see me now get more vocal because it's like that lane. Nobody, it's just there. It's 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 Mm -hmm. it's um. I remember being. When was Jeff? He was like on the what was it B T had a show on B T, right? That was like yeah, B T. That was like what that was a couple of what was that old I don't remember. And right. but but I think that man, I think that and this is not no slight to him, I think that every time that voice is presented, man, it's presented in such an unauthentic, preachy, lectury type of way that 
And now it's even worse because these kids today, they're on the Internet, they're on social mm-hmm. media. That doesn't work to them at all. Mm-hmm. Like that lecturing, I'm positive and I'm perfect, it don't work for them at all, mm-hmm. bro. But that goes like, back to just, being disconnected, though. That goes back to them not realizing or understanding what what the youth and what the young folks are, are listening to and what they're attracted to. What it is, I think we're overthinking it. No, what it is, man, just be a genuine person, brother. Brother, ain't nobody out here perfect. There's nobody out here that preaches positive 24-7, including myself. True. That's true. And people read through that. People, okay, hold on. Are you a human? Okay. Are you a... Are you a you know what I'm it's, a, it's a simple tenet. When I Got did you. my show with, with Chad Johnson, That's people were like, oh, he's admitting that, damn, he's he a real person. He also... Bro, people are not buying into this. You're perfect. You have all the answers. You don't gotcha. do anything wrong. Gotcha. They're not gotcha. buying into that. And I think all of those people, I don't know if, if him or those Jeff, whoever does it, I don't know if it's them or the brand or the BET, I don't know. But anytime gotcha. these guys are presented, they're presented as this one dimensional positive talking head. And that gotcha. people look at it like, oh, this is a facade. This can't be gotcha. real. Gotcha. And it's, it's and sad it's, that our that our culture, but to be fair to Jeff and to be fair to Positive Brothers, is that what's so messed up about black culture is mm-hmm. that the guys who are preaching positive, even though they're getting slammed, but people are loving the guys speaking negative. It doesn't make – because they're both frauds. They're right. both playing into a, a, a persona and a gimmick. So why mm-hmm. is the guy who's playing into the negative gimmick or the negative brand or the neck? Why is he okay, but the positive guy they hate him? Why? That doesn't make sense. Right, right, right. <laughs> because they're what? both playing a role. Mhm, mhm. What, what, what does what does you you mentioned this because I do want to get on the chat in a second. That interview, <laughs> I thought that was one of your better interviews too, but. What does Liv, when you say Liv Duval wants you to meet like a Charlemagne, what what does Liv Duval want you to meet a Charlemagne? He for? just I wants all of us to connect, man. I mean, you know, he just feels we all got a voice. Everybody brings something different to the table, and gotcha. we all connect. Gotcha. And I don't have a problem with that. Like, gotcha. I'm all for unity, and and bro, I I, I want every brother out here to be successful. But I don't mm-hmm. have to agree with your politics. Or what you do and say, because I agree, I understand the collective. I understand the power of the collective. You know what I'm saying? But what I won't do is that that ain't just that ain't my stuff, man. You know what they mm-hmm. do over there. I, you know I'm I'm not knocking them, but I don't watch that stuff. You know, I'm a mm-hmm. I'm a PBS type of brother. You know I don't, mm-hmm. You know so a lot of times when people ask me questions about different personalities or different, I can't tell you because I ain't paying attention. Mm-hmm. It's nothing mm-hmm. personal. That just ain't what I'm on. That's mm-hmm. all. You know that that's just not what I'm on. You know. But I think what's very unfair is that, like I said, most of these they're all playing into a role. So why mm-hmm. is it the guy playing into the positive role gets slammed so much? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think black people just wired to negativity, bro. If you really mm-hmm. think about it, mm-hmm. if you really think mm-hmm. about it. I mean, we're just wired to negativity, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, Duval has been trying to get me up there. Was I, I don't mind going up there, but I just know from what I've heard about the court, nobody's going to ask. I'm not. There's certain things. And I think people know better than to, to, to engage me in certain topics. I'm not going there. You know, right. I'm just not. It's just, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm I don't know, man. It's a, it's, we, I look at the culture right now, bro. I'm, I'm a serious dude. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have time for the, for the, for the hoopla. You know, mm-hmm. but I feel we could all come on one accord and do some things. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, BG, you want to add to that before I ask somebody? Well, to I mean, it, it depends <laughs> on how it depends on how you want this to go because I just got I just got to come in on one of my favorite interviews. So if okay. you want to keep it, if you want to keep it serious, you better go ahead and let me come come after you. Well, well, I, well, no, we don't. No, we're not doing like this here, man. But you guys kind of get what I'm saying. I just think, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. Like I said, all I want in black culture is we give the same room for 
conscious people to bleed as we give everybody else. That's all. I, I yes, agree sir. 100%. I agree 100%. And, 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 and even in that, I, I do want to get – we did a show. We did a show. This show here, Free Lunch Podcast, uh, we did a show on the Chad Johnson, on your Chad Johnson interviews. Oh, wow. Uh, but monogamy, we, we oh damn! <laughs> yes, we did, we did. So that was the third. That was the third interview. And BG, I don't know if this is the one that you wanted to that you wanted to answer. No, that ain't it. That ain't, ain't it. One. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So let me ask you about the Chad Johnson interview, which I thought uh-huh. was very. Again, it was true to form. It was very authentic. What What was your thoughts on his honesty and his openness? Did you know that going into that interview that this is what you was gonna well, nah, 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 I didn't. I mean, I love it. I love it. I mean, me and Chad are very similar in the fact that we're both eclectic, eccentric type of people. So I think what made the interview so cool is that he's extreme in his eccentric way of views of life, and I'm extreme. So he's like, mm-hmm. you got two extreme people who are going at it who are not going to back down, and we're both <laughs> honest. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because no one, has, no one ever... And I, I like the pride nightcap in the one, to me it's the one space in the culture that really peels back the layers of people, that really gets to who they are. And yeah. um, that's, that's what you say you're opening. That's what you say you're opening. <laughs> yeah, and, and that, that, that's what I strive to do because I get to be open with it. You know, so with Chad and me, that was just a magical moment where so many women loved that conversation because they still, women still ask me because women never get to really hear the truth from men. Like, what uh-huh. we really think. It's always some, um, you know, and I'll throw them under the bus. I don't care. All these things like a man, all this nonsense. A lot of this stuff is just pandering to women. No, you know, you, you tell a woman something that's going to make her not feel bad about being alone and, and you make money off of her. Me and Chad, we gave women the real. And yeah. I'm the women literally with even around the world like, thank you. Wow. That's what y'all really think? Yes, that's what we really think. <laughs> you know, that was some. That was two men really getting real. Yeah. <laughs> it was real. <laughs> it was real because everything else is very everything. What I notice about the culture today, everything is a is a brand, man. Everything is a gimmick, man. Like I don't know what's real anymore, bro. I, I don't know what's real anymore. I just don't. So with me and, and Chad, and, I mean. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was just honesty. Everything that was said is true. Everything. It's so funny. My girlfriend at the time, man, she went crazy after that. <laughs> she went. She lost her damn mind. Peter, I, I get it. You know, I was fellas. You know what? You're right. I know what you about to say. Ty. I know you about to say Peter. You about to say Peter. You didn't expect her to go crazy. I'm gonna tell you nah. what happened. I, I wasn't cognizant. I'm just. I'm such a real person. I wasn't cognizant. Yo, I'm, while I'm talking, I'm thinking, why? Wow, I do have a girl. She might lose them. Oh, she went crazy. Oh, man. So, so what happened, y'all? Let me see what happened. So she went and called her girlfriends, and all of them sitting watching this mess. So I guess she didn't know what I was about to do. So oh, man. She and her girlfriend is watching this, and her girlfriend is saying, when are you going to tell Chad he got a girl? But see, the problem is, <laughs> you never did. You never did. And yo, yo, y'all just got to excuse it. I never told anybody that because I just wasn't thinking. Oh, but it was, I didn't want to put, I didn't want to bring her up because it was kind of like, even yeah. in that space, I was still doing yeah. monogamy or whatever. So it's like, dude, she literally had a little girl's night where they was sick. Why? She... She called oh. me. I am so embarrassed. You oh. just have no respect for me. <laughs> oh. And see, and see, Chad didn't make it no easier. For the whole interview, Chad's like, well, when you find her, let me know. When you find her. So she told yep. me, so why you didn't tell the public you found her? And then oh. my behind, I'm so honest. I said, well, I don't know if I really thought I found her. I said, oh, oh. No. <laughs> Yeah, that was just, yo, that was a disaster. That was a disaster. <laughs> that's, that's true journalism. You stuck to it, boy. You you rolled man, down. That was now. a disaster, man. Cause she was that's like, a classic. That's you a classic. You telling the interview. world, 
you haven't found this type of woman, so who the hell am I? And then she kept oh, talking to me. I said, well, I don't know about you either. <laughs> I've been there, people. I've been there, people. <laughs> that was a disaster. There, I, I, the whole time, and then my cameraman's like, Peter, you, you, so you, 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 you okay with this girl? <laughs> He's like, you okay with this girl seeing this dog? I said, I gotta get the people the truth. I gotta get the people the truth. Oh, you, didn't want to edit, you didn't even edit it out, man. That's so gangster. Nah, That's so man. Gangster. Because Chad kept saying, remember he said, what he said? He said, when you find her, let, just let me know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> go ahead. Go he ahead, said, BG. I, what you got, He BG? said, I'm sitting there. I'm just embarrassed. My girls are looking at me like, are you sure oh, you know a relationship? That's the wow. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> but, but let me ask this question. You 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 interview, uh, we've talked about a few. You've had T.I., you've had Ross. Yeah. One of my favorites was the baddest chick, Trina. Oh, Trina. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, Trina. What was it like? What was it like <laughs> having Trina right there for a one-on-one conversation? You know what's so crazy, man? Trina has been a supporter of mine from way back when I wrote Trick's book. So, yeah. What people don't know about Trina, she's very shy man, and very sweet. Like she's a vulnerable type of girl. Like, all that, all that tough, baddest, that ain't who she is. She's a very like soft chick. Like she's really right. not that tough type of. Mm-hmm. So when, mm-hmm. when me and her get together, it's always you saw I riled her up too. I got her mad. Trina jumping out the chair. She was ready to snatch me up. You know, mm-hmm. but I got I gotta give that real talk. She was ready to snatch. She was like, so why y'all cheat? Please tell me what. Yeah, she was hot. Like, when, mm-hmm. what you guys saw, what I love about Nightcap, man, I open people up to just, just reveal truth so we could get mm-hmm. some understanding. Like, she really was upset. Like, I don't know who the guy was, but she was really, if you look at that interview, I remember. You I remember got being it, I really remember. upset, bro. You, you got that emotion out of it. It was, it was a real interview, through and through. Yeah, and, and nobody gets Trina to open up like that. Nobody. Nobody. Uh-uh. Trina just, um, she, um, yeah, she, she was hurting. If you really look at the interview, and you, she saw me ask, I said, man, who hurt you? Like, she's yeah. really hurt. Mm-hmm. You understand, Trina's a woman, man. You don't think she want to have a family, kids, husband, right. of course. Of course. This has been great, Peter. This has been Appreciate y'all, doing. man. Yeah, yeah no, that, that sad thing, that was hilarious, man, because... Yeah, that's... Bro, she called me. She said, oh, I like I like to thank you for just disrespecting me. I like you. Oh. I guess I'm a gold digger, huh? Because I guess you ain't found her yet. I said, like, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Yo, she hey, had her got, girlfriend... Got a- she had a female friend's watch. I said, babe, why you had your girls watch that? You didn't see the title? You ain't see the title? She was like, I didn't expect you to lose your damn mind. He's talking about his them. You got to talk about yours? Oh, man. You got to do another one with Chad. You got one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been years to. later. It's been years later. I mean, no, me and Chad later. gotta do one with me, him, and some women, man. I, we gotta invite some Ooh. women to that conversation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, now that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. So Peter, we really appreciate it. And like I say, you like I say when um when I first came across your your interview with Lil Boosie, it was at that point where I started to um I just started to follow you. I subscribed that day to Nightcap, and I've been a supporter ever since. Um, I, I guess I didn't ask you about Mr. Rose. Is Mr. Rose gonna make another debut? What's yeah, what man, we were crying because I got a film I'm coming out with called Miami Gone's a Love Story, man. So with Nightcap Live, I'm going to keep coming out with these with these different characters that, that give a message, you know, that really kind of – because I'm expanding beyond just the interviews to, you know, the films and whatnot, man. Definitely okay. expanding, but definitely expanding, man. Well, well, if you need some – we definitely – we definitely – we'll we'll do both. We'll, we'll attend the Nightcap Live when you release the Miami Gone's and – and you want to, Thanks, we'll, we'll, we'll participate and, and we'll be in the film at no charge. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> got you, homie. Got you, homie. <laughs> like I say, what you're doing and your authenticity is, is what's needed, and, uh, and we support you. Much love. Thanks, man. Appreciate you all.
Any any way you want the people to reach out to you? Twitter at I am Peter Bailey, L E Y, Instagram at I am Peter Bailey, L E Y. The website is I am Peter Bailey dot com. L E Y. I am Peter Bailey dot com. And I, when I was doing some research and I typed in Peter Bailey Bailey, this is not Cynthia Bailey's uh husband. Yeah. Why did he keep coming up? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He keeps coming up, man. <laughs> I saw oh, you that. Like, that what too? the hell? Yeah, yeah, first, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't understand. It's that. the first, it's the first link when you search your name. So yeah, they we might want to work on that because they got you linked to the the Housewives of ATL. Yeah, yeah, they ain't trying to be linked to that, man. Nah, don't be linked, linked to that. To that. So. All right, yeah. man. Much love, uh, uh, All Peter. Right, and, uh, we appreciate it a lot. Appreciate Thanks, man. You. BG. Classic. I wasn't even expecting to get into all that. You know, great conversation. We covered a lot of different topics, and we got a chance to talk to somebody, man, who's like kind of paving that way. And like I said earlier, kind of giving us that motivation to keep going. So I, I had fun with this one. Man, I apologize in advance because <laughs> I got I got caught up. I got caught up in the end. <laughs> It, it, it was that kind of interview, though. It was that type of conversation. And, and what you saw is like it's the same way that he does in his interviews where it just becomes dialogue and they just get into all different issues. We just did that. Um, so, you know, dynamic, man. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get that exclusive, though, but I wondered about that. Like, I wonder if Peter got a girl while he's talking about mono- uh, having – polygamy with, with Ocho Cinco and what the response is going to be when she see this. And go figure, we got the exclusive on the Freelance Podcast. Oh, man. Oh, That's man. Crazy, bro. Bro. Man, let's get up out of here. I apologize, BG. I got nothing wrong caught with it. I got, I got wrong caught with man. You got to let the spirit use you. So, <laughs> so we had Peter Bailey on here. Go check him out. He's got a, a book. The book he was talking about that he did with Trick Daddy, Magic City Trials of a Native Son. Check that one out. And then, like I said, just follow him on his Instagram and Twitter, I am PeterBailey.com. And check out some of those Nightcap videos. I mean, he's got a number of videos and interviews with some of your favorite artists and celebrities and people that are doing things in the community. So check those things out. Um, and for us, we are the Freelance Podcast home of the New South Movement. Check for us. We're on iTunes and SoundCloud. Just search New South Movement and we'll be there. Um, What else, man? We're on YouTube, too. Free Lunch TV. Check for us. Just tell a friend, tell a friend. Support the movement. No doubt. I am your boy, Ty. Thank you, boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye